The Shrek movies and its spin-offs have made over $4 billion at the box office. There's a reason for that. And if you want to write movies for Hollywood, it's worth understanding why. I'll tell you why. Although there are many things that led to that success, one of them is definitely the way that it used four key elements of character to structure a really compelling first movie. And because it's such a clean example of how to do this, that means that you can use it to help your own writing. In this video, I'm gonna cover those four key elements of character. I'm gonna show you how they interact with each other to create dramatic tension, and then I'm gonna show you how to use them to write a script. My name's Nathan Graham Davis, and I'm a professional screenwriter, but I wasn't always. When I was starting out, I didn't know much, but I did know a few basic things. I knew that you needed a protagonist. I knew that the protagonist needed a goal, and I knew that in order for them to feel three-dimensional, they needed to have some sort of flaw. What I didn't understand was the relationship between those things and how I could use it to my advantage. I figured you could just pick any random goal and any random flaw and call it done. And while you could do that, in a well-crafted movie, these things are definitely not random. They are chosen with care to create an emotionally satisfying story in which the protagonist experiences a lasting and fulfilling change. Let's pretend it's you who's writing it for a minute. You've got this great concept about an ogre who needs to rescue a dragon and you need to figure out how to build a whole movie around that. Because you're a brilliant Hollywood screenwriter, you dive into that ogre's character and you begin with that first key element, his want. What are you doing in my swamp? Shrek's want is as clear as it is simple, which is a good thing, by the way. He wants to be left alone to live in his swamp. Why, though? Because he's a grump who doesn't know a different way of living. It makes perfect sense, and we will wholeheartedly buy this as an audience because he's used to people hating him because he's an ogre, and he's learned to embody that as his identity. And look at that. Without even trying, we suddenly have a flaw. Shrek has embraced the idea that he's a loner, and importantly, he's kind of okay with that. The opening sequence shows how much fun he has living alone in his swamp. Shrek's want is directly related to his flaw. And once you understand what those things are, you have all you need to craft a great inciting incident because the inciting incident is basically just the best or worst possible thing that could happen to your protagonist. It upsets their status quo in a way that really forces that want to bubble to the surface. So you decide that Shrek, who wants to live alone, is suddenly forced into doing the exact opposite of that thing. You have completely upset Shrek's status quo as a loner, and importantly, even if he doesn't realize it yet, as an audience, we are now getting a little bit of a feel for his need. Shrek needs people in his life who love him for who he is, and he needs to find a way to love them right back. Except, you just set up what a jerk this guy is. He has zero reason to do any of that. How are you going to get him there? You're gonna trick him, and you're going to use his goal to do that. Because you're a brilliant writer who writes active and interesting protagonists, you're gonna have Shrek be proactive and have him march right down to Lord Farquaad's castle and demand that he get rid of the squatter. And after some hemming and hawing, Lord Farquaad will promise to do just that if Shrek will rescue the princess that Farquaad wants to marry, who just happens to be locked in a tower and guarded by a fearsome dragon. Shrek's want is so strong that he agrees to do this crazy thing, and now he has a movie-worthy goal that will take him all the way through Act 2, with a lot of fun set pieces that allow his character to shine, and now you have something that's starting to look like a movie. But how exactly will this goal help Shrek fulfill his need? Well, because you're a brilliant Hollywood screenwriter, you have discovered a crafty way to partner Shrek up with a character who for some reason has taken a liking to him and who annoys the absolute hell out of him. Right, you know what? Maybe there's a good reason Donkey shouldn't talk. And this is important because Donkey is so annoying for the first part of Act 2, Shrek is going to be convinced that he is absolutely right about wanting to be alone. But that's not quite enough, is it? So for the first part of Act 2, on top of having Donkey annoy the absolute hell out of Shrek, you're going to have them rescue Princess Fiona, who has been waiting for her Prince Charming this entire time and she is going to be absolutely dismayed to discover that Shrek is an ogre. And there you have it. Case closed, Shrek is meant to be alone. Except, as you start approaching the midpoint of the script, Shrek, Donkey, and Fiona start having fun together. They start working together, and they fight together. And despite himself, Shrek is enjoying their company. And even if he dislikes it, and even if he can't quite yet admit it, he is starting to realize that there is a chance that he's wrong. But you can't just end it like that. That would be way too easy, and it wouldn't make for a good movie. So instead, because you're not just a brilliant writer, but because you're also an incredibly cruel one, at the midpoint of the script, just as Shrek realizes he might be falling for Fiona, 
you're going to have him overhear part of a conversation between her and Donkey where she tells him that Princess and Ugly don't go together. Now, as an audience, we know that Fiona's talking about herself, but Shrek doesn't. Shrek thinks that she's talking about him. And as we move into the second part of the second act, he is now 100% convinced that he was right all along and that he is meant to be alone. Not only does this hurt Shrek, it hurts us as an audience, and that is exactly what you want, because now you have us completely hooked and on the edge of our seats as we move into the back half of the movie and hope for a happy ending. Because hurt people hurt people and ogres are no different, you're gonna have Shrek be a bit mean to Fiona as he tells her that it's time to deliver her to Lord Farquaad. And then Shrek does just that, completing his quest. And his want is fulfilled. He gets his lonely swamp back at the end of act two. Except there's a problem. Without even realizing it, Shrek's journey has changed him. He recognizes his need and that he's no longer happy knowing that it's unfulfilled. And for the purposes of your movie, this is fantastic. Because now, with some encouragement from Donkey, Shrek now has a new goal and that's going to carry us all the way through Act 3. He's going to... Like, subscribe, and comment on this video. But after he's done doing that, he's going to stop the wedding. Shrek gets to the wedding and he objects. And because you are one hell of a writer, you're going to give him one last chance to revert to his old ways. You're going to have Lord Farquaad laugh at him. You're going to have everybody in attendance laugh at him. And you're going to have Lord Farquaad go on to say that nobody can love an ogre. But after just a brief crisis of conscience, at the emotional high point of the movie, Shrek realizes that he knows better. And then he sees Fiona turn into an ogre, and there's a little bit of a battle before the dragon comes and eats Lord Farquaad, and we get an incredibly satisfying happily ever after. So to recap, the protagonist's want stems from who they are in the status quo of the beginning. That want is directly related to their flaw. That flaw dictates what they actually need. And finally, although they think their goal will get them what they want, what it actually does is it makes them realize what they need. And then, because you're one incredibly brilliant, crafty writer, you're gonna use that realization to propel them into act three. Is that pretty simple? Yeah, it is, but it's also effective. And there are infinite ways to apply these ideas to craft a unique story. And although not every movie works this way, or even should work this way, Many movies do, even if their layers are a little more subtle. And Shrek is a wonderful $4 billion example of that. If you can think of more examples or counterexamples, leave them in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Thanks so much, everybody. See you next time.